All right, this is the basic instructions for the uh, four exercises I combine. Um, what this does is it creates a circuit regimen. So you're working one muscle group while you're relaxing the other muscle groups in your body. And you go through four exercises that hit your neck, your stomach, your back, your hips, and your shoulders. So the basic idea here is you want to balance the strength of the body and alternate working on different areas so that you can move continuously through the different exercises without tiring one area out. So the basic concepts that you're gonna see is the exercise starts from a starting position. You wanna breathe out as you move through the position, hit the finish point, and then breathe back in as you come back to the start. When you do that, it's not about how hard you do it or how fast you do it. It's about how well you control it. Is your body shaking as you move through the exercise or are you keeping balance and operating smoothly? Are you able to reach the end point and immediately stop and slow back down by having that control of your body to switch from one type of motion to another? It's actually more difficult to do the release, the second part of the exercise, slowly than it is to do the first part of the exercise harder. So you want to balance the speed so you get full benefit of the exercises. You get more benefit from doing the exercises deliberately and controlled than you do haphazardly, off balance, shaking and quivering and barely making it through it. So when you get to the point that you see that you're able to do the exercise at three sets of 10 with control, then you want to increase to one set of 15, two sets of 10. So the first day you did it, you do one set of 10 just to see how your body responds. If you have any dizziness, nausea, pain, discomfort, radiating pain, headaches, discontinue until you see the doctor and get adjusted again and decide if it's worth continuing the exercise or modifying them to do it a little bit easier on the body. So when you have the exercise you're doing, you're doing three sets of 10 on your next visit if you don't have any problems, and you're probably gonna have a little shaky quiveriness. Once that goes away, and you can do the full exercise at the beginner level without having any problems, then you move up to three sets of 15. When you do three sets of 15, you don't go straight to three sets of 15. You do one set of 15, two sets of 10. See if you have a problem. Next time you do two sets of 15, one set of 10. See if you have a problem. As long as you continue to not have a problem, keep moving up to three sets of 15, and then you go one set of 20, two sets of 15, two sets of 20, one set of 15, three sets of 20. By the time you hit three sets of 20, you should be doing the intermediate level of exercise. Don't go to the advanced level until you're three sets of 20 and you introduce that at that time. Don't do more than three sets of 20 at one time. It's too much repetition, too much strain on that area of your body. If you want more benefit, do it periodically throughout the day. Do it breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You can do it up to five times a day without having any real repercussions. It'll just give you more benefit. Now, because it's an aerobic exercise and an anaerobic exercise interval training, it's very intense. So you're doing a circuit regimen with interval training. It's very effective and burns a lot of calories in a very short period of time but it accomplishes more work in a shorter period of time. And that's the benefit of doing these. So when you're doing these, just keep in mind that it's not about each day that you do them, if, you know, what you're counting on benefiting from that. It's by having the regular benefit of doing these to last a few days afterwards. So if you never go more than three days without doing your exercise, you'll always be walking around with the benefit of stabilizing and strengthening these joints making sure everything's moving right. And I recommend using these as a warm up before working out with weights or doing an intensive um, activity. And the reason is it'll identify areas of weakness in your neck or your lower back. If you have a little back problem and you try to do the up down dog and it creates a spasm or a problem, you'll know right away that you can't do any intensive exercise that day that involves your lower back. So you need to go see your doctor before you uh, try to do that, find out what's going on, get it taken care of. Now, a couple tips. When you start off, you're gonna try to cheat. You're going to try to bend your elbows and bend your knees 
in order to uh, accomplish um, the exercise where your body is weak, it will look for ways to compensate. For example, I'll show you here. When you're doing the left hand, right leg quadruped, when you try to lift your hand off the ground, it's easier if you do it without lifting your legs. Your body knows that, so it'll lift the arm up and you want it to go higher, so you bend your elbow. So you end up doing this and then bending your knee and lifting your leg up like this, and you're not putting the full range of motion in your shoulder and your hips. So what you gotta do is lock your elbow, lock your knees, force your hand and your foot to come off the ground at the same time at the same height together and force it up into the air as far as you can. It may be uncomfortable. As long as it's not sharp pain, continue. If you have too much ease of doing that, if it's not difficult enough, put your hands together. Same with all the other exercises. To make it harder, put your hands together. If it's too hard because you can't keep your balance, every time you lift your hand, you're falling around. Widen your hands and feet gives you more balance. Same goes for all the exercises. If you have any questions, call me at the office and schedule an appointment and we can talk about that.